God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. Hear these words of Scripture. Love one another, for love is of God, and whoever loves is born of God and knows God. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Let us in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God. God of mercy, mercy. we have have sinned against against you and against against others. We have have sinned sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name. And And tell of your salvation salvation from from day day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations. Your Your praise to the the ends of the earth. earth. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. You mountains, that you skipped like rams. You little hills, like young sheep. 
Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only have vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and for those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord they stand for us, stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they gave to God, they gave thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord who gives thanks to God. We do, do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall, praise, shall give praise to the Lord. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Here was the Spirit is saying to the church. The response to the reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. 
when he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The response is Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, Sing in endless praise, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, we believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord be with you. I beg your pardon. First, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his own, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Make your ways known upon earth, O God. Your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness. And help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation. That justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace. And let your glory be over all the earth. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created, and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live each day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. These are, of course, Jesus' famous words as a cohort of Roman soldiers nail him to the cross. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. St. Stephen's last words as he is stoned to death. And did you know that Martin Luther King famously postponed one of the biggest marches he led by a day so as not to conflict with his arch enemy, Sheriff Bull Connor's wedding anniversary. Many have said that this was just a big political and publicity stunt, and there's probably some truth to that but I believe there was also something far more genuine going on in King's heart. Now, it's all too easy to look at these moments as examples of how extraordinarily saintly figures behave, but to say that the rest of us, for the rest of us, hanging on to anger and resentment is just one of life's inevitabilities. But in today's gospel, Jesus tells us that we had better get our act together and be more like one of these saintly ones. So my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now this is a tough read to put it mildly. The parable he tells ends with a slave being thrown into prison and tortured until he pays an impossibly large debt because he himself refused to forgive the debt of a fellow slave. It's hard to reconcile this image with the image of a God full of grace and love who doles out forgiveness 
and countless other gifts to us creatures with absurd generosity. It becomes much easier to reconcile, though, if we take a moment to examine what it's like to be in a state of unforgiveness. It is torture. When Jesus says that our Heavenly Father will torture us until, he for, until we forgive, he isn't threatening. He's simply diagnosing. Holding on to a grudge is such a weird thing. It seems to be a strong tendency in us humans, and I think we justify it to ourselves by saying that people who have done great wrong to us or to others don't deserve to be forgiven. But this justification misses a simple but key fact. The person from whom we're withholding forgiveness isn't hurt at all by this. He or she surely has plenty of issues to resolve, but someone else holding a grudge doesn't do any direct harm. It does, however, do tremendous direct harm to the person actually holding the grudge. Modern psychology demonstrates clearly that a state of unforgiveness eats away like a cancer at our minds and our souls, and perhaps even our bodies. So it is indeed torture. It just happens to be a sort of torture that is inflicted from within, not from some outside source. So I recognize that I've done a great job of pinpointing the problem thus far, but that's a far cry from identifying a solution. I definitely recognize and honor that when we feel deeply hurt by someone or something, it may not be as simple as just deciding to forgive. And this is definitely not a sermon about beating yourself up until you decide to forgive. In fact, this is not a sermon that is so much about giving up anything, but rather finding something. Please bear with me for a short discussion of human nature as the Bible presents it. This may come as a surprise to some because in recent decades and centuries, Christianity has taken a little turn off of this. But classic Judeo-Christian tradition teaches that human nature is unequivocally good. Not just good, but divine. And this comes straight out of the Bible's creation stories. God made man and woman in God's own image and likeness. And after the sixth and final day of creation, God rested declaring it all to be very, very good. And human nature is immutable. It is the eternal, unchangeable kernel of who we are. Now, human condition is something else. This is what we often call the shadow side of ourselves. It is the ways in which we express ourselves that fall short of the divine glory for which we were made. It is what St. Paul calls the flesh and what throughout the Bible is referred to as sinful. But our condition, our shadow side, is just that. It's a shadow. It's not the real thing. 
and ultimately it's just a paper tiger. When Jesus said, as he did in last week's gospel, that we are to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him, what he means is that we are to deny our condition. We are to refuse to let our shadow side gain the upper hand. Never in a million years, however, does he mean that we are to deny our true nature. Entirely the opposite. His entire point in coming to earth was to expose human nature for the perfect and divinely beautiful thing that it is and to invite us to revel in the wonder of that. So back to forgiveness. If our freedom from hurt and pain requires that we forgive, and it does, doing so entails not denying our true nature, but tapping into it and embracing it more fully. Being creatures made in the image and likeness of God, we are forgiving and generous by nature. It is only our condition that harbors pettiness and grudges. So how do we get past our condition and back to our true nature? We do it by engaging in the very practices I have been encouraging in the last several sermons. Dr. King didn't simply get up one morning and decide to be forgiving enough that he could treat Sheriff Connor as a brother, even while the sheriff treated him like a dog. He had to fast and pray for days before his angry and vindictive condition gave way to his divine and forgiving nature. And it's the same with all of us. I'm convinced that some of the surest signs we get that it's our condition that's in the driver's seat are the physical ones. Elevated heart rate, shortness of breath, a desperate sense of need to talk or to move are often the telltale signs that we're in the fight-or-flight mode where we are least likely to be able to forgive. Now, when that happens, unless there is really immediate physical danger to you or to others, I encourage that you make it a practice to stop every single time and just breathe and pray. Pray for as long as it takes your body and your mind to return to their ground state. This might be seconds, minutes, hours, days, or even years. I am well aware that in such a moment your mind might be angrily saying back, I can't stop and pray, I don't have time for that. But I maintain that you can't afford the time to not do that. And I suggest you pray for something very specific. You don't need to pray for the person who's hurt you, or for forgiveness, you may not be in a place that you're even able to do that authentically. Simply pray that God will reveal your own true nature to you and allow you to delight in it. This might sound like a very self-serving prayer, but I'm convinced that it's almost always the best one. 
under any circumstances. Because when God answers it, and God will, all else will fall into place. Forgiveness will come easily. Beloved, today's gospel is not a threat. It's simply a diagnosis. When we believe that we have been wronged or hurt by others, if we let our conditioned response of holding on to the hurt take over, we will indeed wind up in a place of unending torture. But it's torture of our own design. If, however, we can take just the first step to letting go, the simple step of praying for God to restore us to our true nature, the trap is broken and the prison doors swing wide open. You were made for freedom. So ask God for it with all your heart. Thank you, God, for helping me to forgive myself and others. Let us pray in joy and hope to our God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you have made your church as an instrument to reconcile all people to you and one another. Shower your grace upon all people and assemblies of faith, that our life together might reflect your divine life ever more perfectly. Today we pray for the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Anglican Church of South America. Pour out your blessings also upon the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our bishop, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and Holy Cross Church in Castro Valley. Let your blessing also come to our fellow faith assemblies in this community, especially Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Livermore. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon the nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially upon Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, John, our mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic and the fear and uncertainty that surround it, we lift up to you all who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially all nurses, Doctors, police, firefighters, Brad O and Brad S. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who is love, this congregation lives as a people blessed by your grace and ever seeking to know and experience you more fully. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. Pour out a special blessing upon these members of our weekly cycle of prayer. Jessica and Adrian, John and Tian, Michael and Bill, 
as well as those in military service. Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Olivia, Anna, Beth, Bob, Kathy, Kathy, Chris, Jessica and Nesta, Dave, Dottie, Elda, Aaron, Esteban, Fabian F., Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida and family, Janice, Leah, Luke, Mark G., Monty and Judy, Nan D., Michael, Sandra, and her mom, Sharon, Steve W., and children, Yunus, the Sherman family, Father Ron Culmer and family, the Cairo family, the Lodel family, the Drake Owen family, the Mabe family, the Turnbull family, and St. Teresa of Calcutta Mission. We also wish for healing prayers for the people of continued healing prayers for the people of Beirut, Lebanon, for all those affected by the wilderness in the West Coast, and all those affected by hurricanes in the South. We send love, sending prayers of love to all Americans on the 19th anniversary of the attacks on 9-11. And we wish joyous birthday wishes for Charlotte P., Patrick P., and we're celebrating the marriage of Valerie and Siobhan in August. Give your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness through all circumstances. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of the living and the dead, in the passion and resurrection of Christ, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed this life, especially Walt D., Wilma M., Matthew S., Robert T., Sonia C., Haney N., Richard F., Olga M., Joseph C., Michal L., Alice D., Betty T., Elizabeth, Andrew M., and Father George E. And raise them to everlasting glory in your presence. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, O Lord of wonder, in great hope, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our other needs and concerns, and we offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life.
shelter and protect those who lack adequate shelter in the season of fire and smoke and ash. For the one day people on the planet can live on two dollars a day. Yes. For all the animals and plants who are being made homeless by all the fires in the West. O oh Lord, your Son said to us that we would know the truth and the truth would make us free. Expose the truth of our nature, sweeping away the sins, the sorrows, the shadows that cling so closely, and let that nature, given straight from you, shine like the sun. We ask all this in your Son's most holy name. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go, we go in, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Hallelujah!